Uh, welcome back to Sunday Brunch. Um, we're so excited. Everyone here is really excited now because <laughs> we're here with a genuine astronaut, yes. Chris Adfield. <laughs> welcome to the show, Chris. Thank We've got you, uh, a gazillion questions for you and we want you as well at home to send in questions because um, uh, you're on for a, a while on the show. Uh, I don't know where to start because we've got too much. Um, uh, how long have you been an astronaut for? You know, I, uh, I dreamed of being an astronaut when I was nine years old, and I was hired, I think, 26 years later. And then I worked as an astronaut for 21 years, so uh, a long time, longer than just about anyone's been an astronaut. How many times have you been in space? Three. Uh, I flew on a space shuttle to help build the Russian space station Mir, and then I flew again on a shuttle to do spacewalks and help build the International Space Station. And then this past year, I lived on and commanded the International Space Station. And I flew up and down on a Russian rocket. So a whole smorgasbord of experience. That's weird, is it? You, you, you never really realize that people actually go into space to do a job of work, like you build up the space age. You think yeah. somehow that it goes up already done. Yeah, it sure doesn't. It's, it's some assembly required, for sure. Is everywhere you go, people like us getting excited about meeting you? Do you have to spend forever just answering questions? <laughs> it's all right. I've, I've, on behalf of billions of people, I've gotten to do something that's yeah. really rare in the human experience. I think it's a real important part of it to, to explain and, and show people what's possible. Okay, interesting, because you became an um, uh, uh, internet sensation as well. Um, you spent a lot of time um, putting stuff on social media, didn't you, mm -hmm. when you are up there. Was that part of the mission, or was that something you decided to do? Uh, when I was nine, I wish someone had been doing that. To right. you know, imagine if there had been uh, a, a live camera on board the lunar lander, or if you yeah, could hear yeah. what those guys were talking about, if they could have shared it even more capably. And so I resolved years ago that if I get to go and spend a long time, I'm going to try and bring it to as many people as possible. I've spoken in thousands of schools. With, with, we made almost 100 videos from the space station. So, yeah, it, it was We can, we can really... look at some while you're talking to us now, I believe. This yeah. is some of the stuff that you put up there. Yeah, um, I think it's a really important part of it to uh, when we launched on the Soyuz here uh, back a little under a year ago. Right, okay. And uh, it's, it's a great ride on board a Soyuz, but to see the world that way is spectacular. It's right under the edge of the Is it true that when you get up there, Oh, look, that's you oh, eating. Well, I mean, there's so much to talk about. Yeah. But is, is it true when you're up there, you spend more time looking back at the Earth than you do looking around? Well, you're inside most of the time, so your eyes, it's sort of like trying to look outside at night. You can't see much because your eyes are all shrunk down because of the light inside. If you want to look at the universe, you have to take time, get to a part of the station, make it dark. We go around the world every 90 minutes, so you get a sunrise every 45 minutes. So, so you need to plan ahead if you want to see the night sky and let your eyes adjust for a few minutes because before you know it, it's dawn again. So yeah, we end up looking at the world more, but the world is so beautifully mesmerizing to all look right. at. And it goes by at eight kilometers a second, so, so you see it all. So we, we have to talk about the overview effect that everyone's sure. heard about recently. It's where astronauts are in space, they look down on the Earth, and, and then they have this amazing feeling of why, why are there borders? and things like is that, is that well, I think it it's imagine if, if the three of us could go around the world 2,000 times together where you could see 2,000 sunrises if you wanted and you could get to know the whole world like you know your hometown and, and that sense of where the edge of where you live gets pushed further and further back the edge of where your experience is starts to encompass the whole planet you start to lose your sense of, of who them is and it all sort mm -hmm. of becomes us naturally it, and it's not like it happens in a minute it's it's cumulative it kind of creeps into you the sense of the whole thing being one place you can't avoid it and, and i've spent half a year up there so it becomes very strong so when you come back that must have a tremendously profound effect though you know when you when you come back and you see kind of news of, of terrible things that happen in the world you just think why well i think it gives you more of a a patience like a like a tolerance it may be like I don't know, like a, a parent looking at their child in daycare, perhaps, where you see, you see the squabbles going on and you realize, well, that's just normal behavior and, and it's how people are. But at the same time, there's a bigger picture and, and these squabbles are short lived. And they're often, you know, it's hard for me to understand the reason, but they're generally for good reasons between the combatants. But at the same time, there are so many great examples of just inherent beauty and grace and peace. And those become, I think, a little more deeply entrenched in you. How, how, how do you feel, how religiously do you feel when you're up there? Because obviously there's so many different religions on, on the Earth. Do you end up feeling more spiritual looking down or do you, do you yeah, end there, up Well, there are so many religions away on the space it. station too, uh, because, you know, people are from all around the world up there. It's an international space station from 15 different countries and different cultures and religions. I think everybody becomes 
a little deeper in whatever their particular personal spirituality is, you can't help it. To see the world not only as one place, but also to see how fragile it is in the midst of the rest. Religious. You become more aware of the importance of spirituality, I think. And, and so therefore, I think it deepens whatever you, and we have all different religions, but I think it deepens whatever you believe. when you're up there and you're looking down, you say there's so many different religions scattered all over that world. It's, it's a, it's a, right, but, they, but one can't be right. They give people strength, and I think that's the part that we all take solace in. You need something to give you strength and comfort and, and a sense of purpose and, and uh, long term. And, uh, and that's kind of the core of spirituality, I think. And when you see the world as a place in the universe, I think it, uh, it deepens that feeling within you. Um, this book, um, what's, what's in the book? Everything. Well, I called it An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth. Because a lot of people ask the very valid question, you know, what's the point of what we're doing in space? And as an astronaut, we ask ourselves that all the time. I mean, we're spending other people's money. Yeah, people, people see that and think that's what's going on. But, you know, we're spending other people's money to do something. And if you can't answer that fundamental question, then you have no right being there. So what are you doing then? Well, it's, I think it's threefold. Uh, one is the pure science of it. You can, there's 200 experiments running on the space station that can't be done on Earth. So understanding the basic elements of the universe, fundamental fluid physics, how flame behaves. We're doing all sorts of fundamental research. The second is, is the basic necessity of humanity to explore. The same drive that, that sent you away from home as teenagers then it had us spread over the whole planet. We've always taken the best of our technology and gone as far as we can. And now for the first time in human history, we can go up into the third dimension. And so it's, it's sort of an inevitability is the second part. But the third, I think, is maybe tied into music. And that is the necessity to inspire our young people with something that is just barely possible. So, I mean, I was so inspired as a kid watching the moon landings and the work that I've done for the last 21 years. I get feedback from tens of thousands of students all the time about what can I do with my life that will let me go a little closer towards my dreams. How can I, what education should I pursue? What should I, you know, and if you can inspire people with that, if you can give them an example that goes beyond the, the squabbles that we get involved in, then people will accomplish more in their lives. And I think it serves all three of those purposes. Uh, can we talk really about just a few of the physical things? Um, space is very quiet, apparently. Yeah, it certainly is. Is, is it, is it A, weird not having any sound up there, and B, when you get back, is it true that even something like that really hurts your ears? Being out on a spacewalk is, is beyond majestic because the world is rolling by next to you, but it's absolutely dead silent. And it should have a soundtrack. It should roar. It should be <laughs> like it, films. Well, it should be a waterfall of noise. It, imagine if you were standing right at the base of Niagara Falls or Angel Falls and it was completely silent. It just would seem even more profound, I think, because it's all visual. And so there's that, that, that eternal, powerful silence that makes your other senses more aware. And so on the space station, there's a, a tranquility and a grace to the existence because of the sort of reverential silence of it. And, and it, it's quite pleasant. But you get back to Earth and you get back to normal and the clutter and noise of, of regular life. But it, it, you've had like six months in a cathedral to think about the beauty of things. When you talk to each other in space, does, does the sound travel differently? Can you actually... Actually, it's, no it's a little bit noisy in a space station because of all the pumps and fans right. running. So it's, it's like a conversation in a bus, sort of, when you're talking to each other. Right. But it's when you're outside on a spacewalk that it is as peaceful and graceful and gorgeous as life can be. That's what I love to do. We, we yeah. haven't even started this when we're out of time. <laughs> yeah. we've, got, we've got more with those. I want to ask yeah. about what it feels like, what happens to your body when you come back. Well, Christmas. we'll ask that in a minute. Yes. Yeah, because you're, you're going to hang around, aren't you? I'll, I'll be got, back, yeah. If you've got yeah. any questions, please get them uh, sent into us usual places. Uh, uh, um, Twitter at uh, Sunday Brunch C4 or Sunday Brunch at channel4.com. In just a moment, we're chatting to the ladies of Little Mix. But first, the boys are helping Jamie uh, take his mind off Lucy in this week's Made in Chelsea.